and, um, and I welcome the opportunity to speak in relation to this bill and to outline some of the reservations that I have about it and I certainly would hope that these would be taken up at committee stage uh, by way of amendment. And the reservations that I have about the bill essentially are that it makes more than minor technical amendments to the relevant Act, particularly in its protection of the title of physical therapist. And I have discussed this with chartered physios and indeed others in the medical and health profession and they share the concerns as well. Physiotherapists are trained in a medical system and they share lectures with pharmacy, with medicine, occupational therapy, speech therapy, radiology, etc. And they also receive compulsory training in hospital settings as part of multidisciplinary teams, which really leads to a very holistic understanding of the whole self. This training is even more important in the isolated private setting in order to protect the public where we have a duty to do so. The networks of the cross-disciplinary knowledge built up means that any red flags are picked up and there is an appropriate referral system to other medical professionals. Chartered physios fast-track referrals to GPs and oncologists, etc., where there is a need to do that. There is most certainly, however, a role for physical therapists in our health system, but there needs to be a clear division in the interest of public health and safety between physical therapy and between physiotherapy. None of us would like to hear that our dentist has regulated without proper was regulated without proper and appropriate qualifications because of a dubious amnesty. We cannot have a dilution of services or of appropriately trained professionals. We have a duty of care to ensure that the best possible professionals are there with appropriate training and education for all in our healthcare system. And I just want to go over briefly some of the very specific issues which my colleague Deputy Butler has also outlined. And again, there are four of these. The first one that I would mention is that the bill does provide for access to the register for people without a qualification. And I say that this is a huge public protection issue, as anybody calling themselves a physiotherapist or a physical therapist without qualification can apply to join the register. And the only clinical requirement here is to pass an assessment of competence. And this certainly exposes the public to huge risk. And the uh, assessment of professional competence that I've just spoken about will be set, we believe, at the standard of an IPTAS qualification and not a physiotherapy qualification, which is the designated profession in this case. And the level of the assessment of competence should absolutely be based on a physiotherapist qualification, not on a lower one. And I would say to you, Minister, that it's absolutely imperative that all registrants have the same level of professional competency to ensure protection of the public. And the other two then that I would refer to is one in relation to the uh, a loophole that is there in relation to access of those who have never practised in a profession does not have a time limit and that is a loophole that needs to be addressed. And also um, the, the final one that I would mention here is the fact that the bill does not include the decision that registrants shall be required to confine their practice to musculoskeletal therapy. And there absolutely is a requirement uh, to include that. And again, that's purely to safeguard the public, which really is at the, the forefront of the issues that we are raising here. Gerv Margot. Thank you, Minister. Thanks, Deputy. Um, I call on Deputy Quibi.